Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page six of Mistletoe and Holly. And we're going to start with two flaps, a left and a right. These are five and five eighths by eight. Five and five eighths by eight. You're going to score at half inch and five eighths, half inch and five eighths. We're going to have a little bit of a gusset on this because we're going to do a lot on the inside. I needed a little bit more room so that the page doesn't bow. So five and five eighths by eight. Now when you score in your scoreboard, you're gonna score at a half inch and then five eighths. You're going to fold both of these and then the tape is gonna go on the half inch side so that you wind up with a little gusset on the side. Okay, don't put your tape on here. Put it over on this side. I'm gonna put one on the left and one on the right. A little bit tricky because you can't see the gusset that well when you first go to put it in. There we go. Line that up. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like. So you can see there's a little bit of a gusset there. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Put your tape on the half inch. Do not go over into the 5 8 inch gusset. Okay, I'm going to do one on the left, one on the right. Make sure I'm right side up. It goes like this. Okay, so you have a left and a right. Now, on top of or on the inside of that, you're going to have um, a top flap and a lower flap, so two on each side. These are five, five inches across by four and three quarters. And you're going to have a top one and a bottom one. So you'll need a total of four. And that's just a, a, straight, a straight score half inch on the four and three quarter inch side. Is that right? Half inch. Why did I do four and three quarters? I think. Hang on. I think it should be four and a quarter. Oh yeah, that's right. Four and three quarters, so a half inch. So you're gonna have four and a quarter on this side. <laughs> Sorry. Got myself confused. Four and three quarters score half inch. Oops. And I should have tested this first. And I can see. Then I need to take a little sliver off because it's going right into the gusset. So let me put my tape back on and we will check this. So I think right now it's five inches and I'll probably need to take a 30 seconds of an inch off. So what I want to do is I'm laying this panel in and I'm going to bring it over to this score line. And yeah, so you can see once I butt it up to the score line, there's that fraction over, but that's going to prevent it from laying nice and flat. So I'm going to take that little tiny bit off. So go ahead and plan to do that. Um, you're going to rough cut it four and three quarter by five. Then you're going to lay it against your score line and trim accordingly. It is just a tiny bit. Let's see. 
it's less than a sixteenth of an inch, so it's pretty small. Let me double check. Okay, that should do it. So now I'm ready to lay this in. And I'm going to go back and check my other pieces. And you'll see how it, it's hard to see, but let me put this in here. So there's the score line, there's the edge of this, so that when we come around and close it, it's not pushing against that gusset. Okay? All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to lay it in right up to the score line. Oops, I should be up here. Right up to the score line. And of course I hit it and shifted everything. And I'll try it. And you're gonna do that two more times for the other side. I've got a pack of magnets over here so everything keeps sticking to it. All right. Okay, these should meet pretty close to the middle. Now the last... Okay, um, I took a quick break and I went ahead and measured and trimmed these other two just like we did over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those left and right on the right hand panel, I mean up and down on the right hand panel, top and bottom. Again, this is your last chance to check the width before you lay it down. Check, check, double check, make sure you're outside of the score line. Okay. I'm turn it upside down so I can see my edges better. Okay, now that's a lot of flaps I know. So the way we're going to hold that together, I'm going to show you the one I've completed and then we're going to build one together. Let me close that side. So start. Okay, so now that we have these in, let's go ahead and start decorating. So we have, I have, picked out some papers for the front. And so this is from the 12 by 12. And this is the second half of it. So it's just a continuation. This is going to go on this side. This will go on this side. These are inked. There you go. And I'm using a new ink because my other one dried out. This is called chocolate malt. And you can kind of see it on here. It's considerably, it's uh, lighter than what I usually use. It's still very brown, but it's a little bit lighter. Now on the inside, we have um, what's going to be a pocket on the bottom. And I later decide, and I think I talked about the size. What did I do with it? Here it is. Oops, got stuck on something else. Okay, you're going to start with six inches, six inches tall by ten. So ten by six. And then you're going to score a half inch on the bottom and a half inch on the side. And it needs to be, I put it in my scoreboard like this, but remember you're going to flip it over. Um, 
Then you're going to go from the, the tip top of this once you cut it uh, at five and a half, right? So once you score that half inch up from six, you should be at five and a half. You're going to cut a diagonal from five and a half to zero, which is your 10 inch mark. Okay, it's going to go right here on the bottom, the inside on the bottom. And I chose a diagonal here because of this print, which is also from the 12 by 12. It has a diagonal feature on it. So I just cut along that diagonal to go right here. This winds up being a very wide page when you have everything open because the flaps are five inches each. So this is 10, 15, 20, so it's quite wide. So hopefully you guys are seeing everything and I'm not going in and out of frame too bad. Okay. Man, my glasses are blurry. Well, my eyes are blurry, but one of the two. Probably a little bit of both. Okay, there we go. Now this is gonna go right here. hoping it would be, but it's not. And this should tuck slightly in, um, and that it should go inside that pocket about an eighth of an inch. So not much, but enough that, you know, you don't have an edge sticking out. And yes, my hands are shaking. I drank coffee this afternoon which I never do, but I, look, uh, I had a headache, so I thought the caffeine might help. It's a trade-off. The headache's gone, but now I'm shaky. Okay. So, oops. Junk. Okay, we have a ton of these cards left over, so I'm going to put some of these cards in here. And then as we get toward the end of the album, I may actually put some more photos in here or photo um, mats in here, but I'm not sure yet. Okay, now we're going to open both of these and lay down this main part, which is this. So one side's down and one side's up. I have to look at the print. Okay, that looks like it. Yeah. So now we've got these um, ornamentals on the left and right, which I like. Okay, now I haven't completely decided how I'm going to keep all this closed, so I'm not going to lay these in just yet. So that goes there. And that's all like that. So, so far, so good. And these are the panels that are going to go on those five inch flaps. So now I need to think about um, how I'm holding all this together and where this diagonal meets. So I definitely want these to be something to hold these down. So do I want to use magnets here? And if I use magnets here, then it gets complicated using magnets here because there's so much conflict. So I need to think of another way to keep this closed. So let's look at um, our little goodie tray and see if there's something in here that would look good. It looks a little undersized. That's kind of fun. I want something that I can easily back with cardstock to stiffen it up. Um, so when I'm opening and closing, it's not flimsy. And these are, you know, pretty hardy, but I don't know that I want to use them as a um, closure. 
they have too many too many edges that's a good one I don't know let's think about that all right I'm gonna think about that and I'm gonna come back to this in a few minutes so I'm gonna take a break for now there we go that's right, and now we do the insides. So, so these were strips that I had left over, and they were the bottom four inches of. Oh, that's why this is four. That's why. This was a leftover scrap. That's why this one's a little bit smaller and the ones on top were not leftovers, so they were cut to size. Yes, okay, now I get it. So they're a continuous, so you can see I cut this in half. So I'm gonna go left and right, left and right. And it's the uh, bottom part of um, the, this with this little girl. So there's the rest of her. So, um, I cut these at the right width. Actually, they're not at the right width. They need to be a little bit smaller because I trimmed. because we trimmed each of these panels um, to fit inside that gusset. So now it's left, right, okay, but it needs to be a little shorter. Remember, this is the panel that we trimmed. There's a lot on this, a lot going on here. I liked it because it was a cookie recipe. Okay, we're going to narrow this down a little. I don't know what's wrong with my flow, you guys. This has been a difficult album for me. Oh, I've made a lot of mistakes. I mean, stuff we can recover from, but it's just a little frustrating. I don't know what's going on. And I'm having a really hard time with my hands these days. I keep dropping stuff. It's hard to be old. Okay, almost done. This is a long one. 
but there's a ton of space for photos. Okay, at the very end I may add uh, some more inserts here uh, once I know how much paper is left. Oops, curled that corner. Okay. All right. So now the last part is the little strip to go behind here. So sticky hands. I don't know what I want to do. I got a ton of scrap, so I'm gonna find a piece of scrap. Mm. We've got these two pieces. Let's do that. Okay. I'm going to mark it, trim it, glue it. And I'm just going to butt it right up there. I know I keep saying it, but man, I really like I really like their paper. really nice. It's so thick and yummy. See, now if this was down here, I just push. <laughs> it wouldn't take two hands. I well, hope you're listening, Powder Puff people. I do like their, um, and of course, you have that same problem with all ink. Um, I do like their products, though. That's just a reference. The inks are wonderful. And they're not messy. All right. Finally, we're finished with page six. Okay, and there's a lot of storage in this one. Okay, then we've got this beautiful centerpiece. Let me clear our field of vision. It opens to the left, to the right, to the left. And we've got upper, lower, over here, upper, lower. And then we have this nice diagonal pocket, which I have prepared. Uh, I did prepare one large insert. This is from the 8x8. I haven't attached it to the black cardstock yet, but that's what's going to go in here. And the measurements are 7 and a half by 8. 7 and a half by 8. That's going to go in here. I have, uh, I'm not putting this together yet because I think I'm going to actually make it like a card if I've got enough paper to do a fold over. So I'm going to leave it as is. 7 and a half by 8 for this insert. That'll be in the cut list. If I add um, to the back side, I'll let you know what that is. It'll be a half inch taller so that we can have a hinge, but I'm not sure I'll have enough paper. So that's where we are. And then, of course, we've got tons of these to tuck in. Um, still left in this one. Now I know I trimmed this extra so you should have enough of this. I'm going to center it but it's actually I'm going to go uh, down here. I'm not going to recut because this is a continuation of this this image. Is it? Wait a second. Something's not right. I may have picked up the wrong paper. It goes here. It goes there, and then these are all the flip sides. I feel like I'm losing my mind. 
Oh, I did it over here too. One of them's a little bit shorter than the other. Huh, that's weird. Okay, well, I don't know why I did that, but that explains why there's so much overage. So let me, let me see what I've done. I need to measure it. Because I do think these are all, that's four and a quarter. And that's four and a quarter, which means this should be four and one eighths, and it is, and this should be four and one eighths, and it's probably not. Nope, I've trimmed it right at four. So these two are trimmed at four, and they should be four and one eighth. So there's a couple things we can do. We can either recut these pieces. I don't have the same pattern. It wouldn't match. Or... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this flap to fit. So hopefully when you're cutting it, you won't come up short. But if you do, I can do what you can do is trim this. It's still going to overlap, so you should be fine. Visually, you won't even notice that it's smaller. So I'm going to glue it where it needs to be. And that's a little bit of a disappointment, but I really want to use this. So I'm going to line it up to the bottom left and right and then I'm going to come back and trim that. I'll probably do it by hand but I'll open it up to trim it right there. So it looks like I'm going to wind up taking off about an eighth of an inch. Okay, So I'll do the same thing on the sides. And this I need to cut a strip for designer paper. I don't have that yet. So I'm going to leave all this in. I know it's confusing, but part of um, mini album making is problem solving. And oh God, I just told you on the other side I didn't trim this down. So it needs to be trimmed down to fit. I'm going to go ahead and do this, trim it down to fit, because I made that flap a little bit smaller because of the gusset. So I'm going to trim this. Put this side down. Oops, take it. While we're waiting for that top to dry, I'm going to start decorating the insides. Okay, this will also take an eighth of an inch off once we're done. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to take that off. I'm going to close those. I'm going to go ahead and close this side so we're only dealing with one side at a time. Now I'm going to use a ruler straight edge to trim that off. As soon as I get here, it is. I don't know what I did with it. This feels awkward. It's not quite enough. I'm gonna actually turn it around. I'm left-handed, so that just that didn't feel right. Much better. You can also lay it in your trimmer if you have some degree of confidence with that. I can't see well enough, so I'm going to mark, mark it and then just line the ruler up to my mark. There you go. So that's one side. It's almost dry. Now we'll do this side. Can't quite close it yet because it's too tacky. Um, now I can. 
Okay, same thing. I'm going to mark it. And then, oh wow, that's crooked. Jesus, Daphne. I'm having a hard time with my eyes, for sure. I'm going to use my uh, metal ruler just because it's got um, cork on the back so it doesn't slide. Pretty good. Now it looks off here because I didn't get this in straight. I don't know how I got so crooked, but I did. Right now, back to, that's right side up on this side. Okay, now we're back to laying this in. Okay, so both of these have been trimmed. Yay! And what did I do with the other piece? That was supposed to be drying. It looks so different on the back, I missed it. Okay. So I, I wish Powder Puff would make this the opposite so that the lid was the one that had the hole in it um, because it would just be easier to, to push, I don't know, I feel like I go to pick it up and then I separate them and then what I have in my hand is not the side I want. I want that side. So if it was the other way around, I'd lay it this way, push and then the ink would be on it. I just speed things up a little bit. Because I don't like to use two hands. It's, uh, looking for efficiencies, I guess. It's a little too far over. Come on. Better. Okay. All right. I guess it goes this way. All right, now this one goes underneath there. Bro. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks, everybody. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create.